Welcome to another episode of We Don't Die. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the international best-selling book called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. And no doubt, if you've listened to this show before, you have heard me brag about the Afterlife Symposium that happens every year in Scottsdale, Arizona. Our guest today is the person actually behind the scenes making the symposium happen and so much more. Her name is Kathleen Malone, and not only an event producer, producer and publicist, she is committed that people and organizations who have big dreams fulfill upon them. If you take a look at her website, which is sundanceonsuccess.com, you'll see the extraordinary folks she has worked with. I thought it would be great to interview her as she has worked with so many people who talk about the reality of the afterlife and help people live powerful lives. Sundance on Success brings new inspirational voices to the spotlight to enlighten, heal, transform, and inspire. Kathleen's services include public relations, marketing, event production, press coverage, press kits, social media, communications, and much more. Without further ado, I'd like to say, Kathleen Malone, my friend, welcome to We Don't Die Radio. Thank you, Sandra. I'm so happy to be here, and I'm so happy to be talking with you. Me too. I have a big smile on my face right now because we correspond by email and then I get to hug you at the symposium. That's kind of how it's been. And I really know, I mean, I know you always have love in your heart. You make things happen, a big smile on your face, but I really don't know that much about you. And I thought this would be fun to find out about you, the woman behind the scenes. Well, you're very kind. I'm looking forward to our discussion. Yeah, thanks. So would you tell us a little bit about you? I, uh, you're in Arizona, correct? I am in Arizona. I'm a transplant from Minneapolis, Minnesota, which I still call home even after 36 years of being in Arizona. Wow. And um, uh, I spent years in the corporate world in the HR arena as a director and decided that um, after a, a a transformational trip to South America. I went down to Peru with a friend of mine. We scheduled to go for two weeks. We wound up staying for six, quitting our jobs, and I never went back. So oh it my was God. <laughs> completely transformational. I realized, wow. oh, the corporate world is not for me. <laughs> So I, I came back and I wasn't really sure what I was going to do. And I got hired on a gig to do some cult consulting work in London, Ontario, and lived up there for four years, um, thinking I was going to retire there, but it didn't work out. And when I got back, um, a very dear friend of mine and my physician, Dr. Teresa Ramsey, said, would you please promote my new book that just came off the press? And I said, well, I would if I knew how to do it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And she said, you know how to do it. And within uh, two weeks, we had her as a as a guest. And that was 2007. And she's been a weekly guest on local television morning shows ever since then and a, a top doc naturopath. And we had some great fortune. So um, but then my my name just kind of got around from there. That's awesome. What I mean, you can't sum up your six weeks in Peru in a minute. But <laughs> Like something big must have happened or could you just give us kind of like the. Something oh. huge did happen. I, I, I knew that I was, <clears throat> pardon me, I, that I was at a crossroads when I went. And so it was perfect timing. We went on the 1999, 2000, um, you know, Y2K mm -hmm. uh uh, time frame where we didn't know what we were going to come back to. It was it was a little tense back then, and um, I I actually had what I thought was a heart attack down there, and um, I made arrangements for for you know for everything to happen after my transition, and I had six shamans around me working on me, and when I finally came out of it, it was actually my heart chakra opening up, cracking open literally. And um, everything changed for me. Everything in my life changed. Wow. Did you see life with like a new set of eyes? Completely new set of eyes. You know, I, it wasn't a, a near-death experience, you know, the traditional kind. But mm -hmm. um, I came back uh, a completely different and, and new person. Man, and sometimes it really takes profound events to kind of crack us open to have that growth. Yeah, I, I've asked for for softer transitions. Yes, 
<laughs> that must have been painful. And I, I even think of so many people that come to listen to this show and come to the symposium. The thing that cracks us open is the pain we feel from grief. Yes, absolutely. And that was that was a time of grief for me. So that's um, it was a, definitely an opportunity to to shift things around. Well, so I was very grateful for the people that surrounded me and the people that that greeted me when I got back to support me in the in the whole process. Sure, I mean you've made a total turnaround in your life, giving up so much and starting venturing out on the in the into the unknown. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So when this came about, the Afterlife Symposium, thanks to Suzanne Wilson, mm-hmm. my my um my friend and client, uh, this this. Uh, this changed everything for my life too. Just, just understanding that it's not woo woo. It's not, um, it is science for, uh, bridging science and spirituality. It is the reality that we only change form when we transition. That's, that's the biggest lesson I've had in the last couple of years. I know you just came from an event with both Suzanne Wilson and Suzanne Giesman, which must have been extraordinary. It was extraordinary. That was an, another life changer. I thought that I had seen and experienced it all, but I was invited to participate. I was working the back of the room, um, you know, with book sales and all that. And Suzanne Wilson invited me to participate because we had an odd number of attendees. And um, I came out of there in joy tears and with another um, heart awakening about our connection to our spirit guides, our master guide, and getting answers and connecting to, you know, the other side every day. We don't need a medium for that. Oh, any tips on that everyday connection? That everyday connection is about intent and uh, stopping and making sure that you tap in and that you, you know, have your own process for connecting, knowing when you've connected, taking that gut feeling and going with it. And it's not, it's no longer for me about polling friends and, you know, polling experts or, or, you know, researching Google or anything like that. Now I know that I can go within and the answers are right there, which is what everyone can do because we're part of the whole so it's it's pretty phenomenal the way that Suzanne and Suzanne teach what they teach because they're so complementary and they just keep expanding on each other. So the whole weekend was was uh, was a pretty dramatic weekend for me, fun and you know really really transformational. Oh, I, th- I wish I could have been there. Well, I know there's going to be more events and that we'll all have opportunities. But I, what you're demonstrating really is like an on the court example of you know, your whole journey and transformation, you know, it starts out somewhere. And then, you know, for a better part of 10 years, or even more than that, you've been involved kind of in the conversation. And now that you're at the point where you know, you trust you with the intent and connects, you just go within, and it's all real. And I think that's available for everybody. It, 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 it is indeed available and it's like a, it's like a bicep. You got to exercise it and you got to move it and you got to pay attention to it and stay aware that it's available to you at all times. You, not just in the, in the tough times or the, or the times where you, where you don't know what to do, but in the times of gratitude where, um, that's the first place we need to start. Can you say more about that? Well, you know, we tend to, um, in, in our traumas and dramas and, and uh, unsure times, we tend to, you know, get down on our knees. But I, I haven't, uh, for me at, anyway, I wasn't getting down on my knees, you know, so to speak, you know, in the great times either. And it's the, it's those rough times that, that create the great times. And it's, a, and it's, you know, a little cyclical as you go up the spiral to, um, to, a, a, a larger and a bigger life and self self growth to you know be be aligned with with your guides in the in the best of times as well instead of you know only in the tough times. Hmm. Well, you had mentioned intent for some people that might just be joining our show and are brand new today. Could it be as simple as like? So many people said, say things like act as if or put a smile on your face for 30 seconds to be happy. If we start a dialogue, whether it's in our minds or verbally trusting that these guides are with us, would that be a, a first start? 
That's that's a great first start. And what I learned and and what I've heard continually, but I I haven't applied it as as much as I am now. And that is, you know, journaling. That's that's huge. It it um, it triggers something in the brain to to have it come out of your hands. And um, so it's an opportunity to really get that down on paper and to look back. You know, note note the synchronicities. Note the note the eleven elevens and and the things that happened that that just in the past have gone right by us. You know, kind of like a wish over our heads. Uh, they become a part of our reality when we pay attention. And so the intent is to pay attention, stay connected, um, and and. Share your gratitude at all times with with your guides and with and with spirit for the the good things and the tough times that do that do create a a, a larger expansive life for us. That's why we're here on this planet. Yes, I, I totally agree. Um, and by journaling, Kathleen, I'm not a big journaler, although I always I have a ton of empty journals. <laughs> are are you writing like your thoughts for the day are you writing dear guides or like what how could we start the journaling process i learned i learned from my mentor suzanne wilson um she's she's been a journaler from from you know from the get go and she's always marking down synchronicities in her journal so i i have a planner pad for my calendar and it and it has a place for notes and so i'm i'm noting things now i'm noting things and it's really making my calendar fun it's it's a fun thing to look back at because i have all of them from years stacked up here and uh, to go back and, and to be able to look at those things is is um, also a part of our growth and a reminder that we are not stagnant, that things are moving along and that we are, you know, we are fine and doing well. And every day, you know, there's something new. You know, Suzanne and Suzanne are, are growing every day as well. It was it was uh, interesting to hear them talk about how how they've expanded in their work um, it, just in the last year. And so uh, we just we keep moving. And so for the journaling piece, I, I, I'm using my planner pad. It's not I don't have a great big diary or anything like that, because like you, I have I have probably 30 unfinished, you know, journals with a couple of pages out of each of them with with uh, very little going. And so now I'm with with intent writing things down. I think it's as well. I just started well, I restarted i have bought this thing on amazon called the five minute journal it's called and um i notice when i do something like some gratitude process that i tend to get more things done and so per, just for my own science project i'm back to this journal to see when i write down the things that i'm grateful for every day and then I write three things down and three things I write what would make today great. And I write a daily affirmation and I keep this book around me and then add to it. I've been, I'm somebody who's got like three books by my bedside all the time. I don't just went, read one from start to finish. I read a little here, a little there, and it just sh goes to, well, I'm twisting up all my words here. Bottom line is what's surfacing is that as human beings, it's so easy to get stuck in patterns that we've had all of our life. And then there's some ways to actually step out of it. And one of the exercises is a few times a day, if we can recall feelings of love, gratitude, joy, being inspired and being of service, it'll like catapult us to like a different level. So today I actually just wrote in my journal, like just memories of like things I love and things I'm grateful for and um, things that have inspired me and times that I've made a difference. And this is really interesting because I did that this morning and I have like had a kick butt today so far. Like it's like I've been on the go, I've been doing things, I feel happy. And I'm just looking like, is that all in response to me? drawing up those feelings this morning. Well, I want, I want what you're having. I, for sure. I, that's, that's, that's phenomenal. I think, I think it's a place where we create from, and I think it's a place where we propel ourselves into our day and into our next, our next effort or our next action item. And it keeps us, it keeps us strong. And I, I, I'm going to be better at it. Uh, I'm, I'm only just beginning, but I, I, you hit on a you hit on a really good word, a process, and and I'm I'm a lover of rituals, and I think that that's also part of our part of our our growth process too, 
in um, in looking deeper, reaching out farther, and um, and staying staying close to our, our our core, our spirit. So that's that's beautiful, Sandra. I think I might have that have to get that journal. Yeah, it's fun. It's called the Five Minute Journal. It was like twenty five bucks on Amazon, something like that. It's a white thing. Um, yeah, and I'm just making little notes, but you know, to record some of the synchronicities, and I call some of them miracles because they come out of nowhere. I see, but but it also, you know, part of what I'm getting at too is quieting the mind. D, are you a believer in that? I, I definitely am. I'm a believer in meditation. Do I do it? Not always. Um, I'm usually jumping, you know, right to the next thing because when I wake up, you know, those 50 to do items are, are flashing in my brain. Um, I try to do it during the midday uh, with, with a walking meditation outside. It's getting a little toasty down here. So I'll have to, um, I'll have to, you know, do that a little bit earlier every day, but it's um, a walking meditation for me is the way that I do it just to stop everything, put my phone down, get it away from my head for sure. And um, just, you know, observe the sidewalks and the sky and the trees and the, and the brilliant colors that we've been gifted with um, is, is a great start is a great thing to do every day. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. One one of the books I'm reading, it's called the intention experiment and it's a little, it's got a lot of science um, evidence as far as like how our intents really can control things and, um, and heal and, and thing. It's really neat. I, I love that science is involved with this. And um, one of the things that it talks about, or one of the books talks about is those points of like meditation when we're, we can really quiet ourselves. It's kind of like, or he just mentioned our cell phone. Like we use it, we use it, we use it. And then eventually the battery drains unless we plug it in. And these times of quieting the mind are the thing that boosts that energy. Um, and, you know, we're all people that want new things in our lives. And I just thought, you know, that's besides journaling, meditation, I'm no expert either, but to have the ritual of daily finding time, even if it's just for five to 10 minutes and just imagine ourselves getting plugged in like we do our cell phone. Um, but yep. knowing that's valuable for, I, I don't think it's just our energy. I think for cre- uh, creating, for tapping into that zone where our loved ones are, you know, for having those um, psychic abilities and things. I, I do think it all comes from that quiet space. Oh, I quite I quite agree with you. You know, if if um if we could just shower all day when all that when all of those uh when all of those great ideas come in, that's that's why I do the walk because you know you can't shower all day when when everything's flooding into your into your heart and mind about ooh that's a great idea. Well, so so the walk comes in handy for sure. That's and, so and I, funny. I, I, contributes also to our to our physical and our emotional health we've, we've got to unplug just just to uh as you said you know unplug and uh you know fill our fill up again we've got to fill it up again because so many of us walk around you know not even realizing that we don't have one of our oars in the water or or we're just um we're just doing that drive where we don't remember doing it you know because we're not we're not present and so that's a that's a big part of what i'm what i'm learning through this work and um through the people that i'm working with and just learning about the afterlife um how important that is here it's part of what the dead want us to know about living so that's that's uh what's what's vital to us right now do you kathleen do you have any favorite stories or maybe topics that between the people you've studied from or the people that you've done PR for about why you believe in the afterlife? Well, I somehow my, my work transitioned from the wellness industry into this world of, of mediumship and afterlife. And um, I did work with one gentleman for, for a short time. Uh, he had an after, he had a near death experience on the operating room table and he admits to being um, a very, he admitted to being a very, um, Uh, focused on on simply what he could get from others uh on things his range rover his um 
his cars, his Mercedes, his trips, his giant 10,000 square foot home. And he admitted to taking advantage of people. And then when he became ill and had this near death experience, he literally went to hell first so that he could feel what he exactly what he had done to others. As he was watching his surgery, he was above the table and experiencing this. Fortunately for him, his deceased father came and pulled him into the light, but he had to experience, and this is, this is part of what I really want the world to know, is we do, when we leave this planet, experience exactly what, um, what we've put others through. We have to feel it. We have to acknowledge it, and then we go up and we work on it. So that's that's one of the stories that has stayed with me. A lot of people share the white share that it's white light, and they don't want to come back. But this particular gentleman was very straightforward that it was that it was blood curdling, uh, messy, painful, and extremely frightening, and something that that brought him back to uh, to a completely different lifestyle. Instead of all of his things and taking advantage of people and seeing what he could get, he came back and, and he is of service now. And I don't think that we need to go through that to to recognize that, you know, what we do to others is is what we do to ourselves. And um, when we're when it's all about, you know, being being a, a loving human being and being of service, but not to the extent where we give away ourselves, which is what some of us women tend to do as just because it's in our DNA to be, you know, caregivers and, and all of that. So the self-care piece and, um, and knowing that whatever you do here, you will experience there. Yeah, it's really yeah. Good, good words. And I don't, you know, while it seems like bad news to replay those things, it's also good news because we can deal with that stuff now, make amends, have the forgiveness to ourselves and others, and really take that stuff on. And I have interviewed a bunch of people that have had near-death experiences. And that life review, we're really looking at your life from the view of who you impacted. You know, that's pretty heavy duty. And, um, you know, I think that can help us live a better life. But then also, most of them have told me that you actually get to see the good that you do, the service that you've done, and the ripple effect how it's made a difference. So, yes, exactly. So, wow. so that, you know, that, that was a rare one and there are people who have experienced that, but for the most part, you know, as Suzanne Wilson writes, um, we, we are our own biggest judges and we, while we, while we do experience how we treated others on this planet, um, we also get to see exactly the great stuff that we did and that and that there is truly our loved ones in the, in the afterlife are waiting for us they're bragging about us they're they're here standing next to us waiting for us to ask for help and um and we seem to um try to force things through ourselves so that's that's the biggest lesson for me in in what i'm learning through through you know we've got 33 presenters coming up in september and i can't read all of their books but i'm like you i have you know three or four books by my bedside and i'll just open one i'll just pull one and say what do i need to most learn or hear right now and i'll open the page and you know read a couple paragraphs and it's usually spot on to what's going on in my life so um, this is all such powerful stuff, but learning what the dead want us to know about living is what Victor and uh, Wendy Zamet will be talking about and talk about profound. Oh my goodness. I'm really looking forward to that. Oh, it's so exciting. And um, I know many of our listeners are attending and I know there will be some that can't attend for whether you live a around the world or there's some other issue but several of the speakers um, are going to be live streamed so we'll find we'll be able to share more about that at a, another time but um, yeah would you mind giving us a little bit of the overview about the symposium I mean I know I talk about it as from invitational you know I'm always inviting always inviting um, <laughs> but as far as like what it would look like to, for somebody to go and like what kind of things would be available well, this year we expanded it by one day so that we could um, offer uh, more more workshops because we have people who have some really great stuff that can't be contained in you know 50 minutes. Right. And so we do have optional workshops. We do have um, other bucket list items 
that you can do here. You can take a trip to Sedona and get up into the magical Red Rocks. You can take a Jeep tour, which is my favorite. Whenever I have people from out of town, I take them on on this particular Jeep tour that I've that I've hired for the symposium. And uh, we will have um, a lot of vendors. We have a huge foyer in this in this uh, this facil- in this resort. It's a magnificent resort. And um, so we will have meet and greets at night in the foyer with with the uh, with the vendors, and um, we will have workshops. We have two really powerful banquets that will be that will be providing. Um, one is one is uh, an awards banquet and a come as you are as you were banquet. What does that dr- mean? I read that and I'm like, what does it yeah. mean? Well, you you dress up from a past life. Oh, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Yeah, it, so it's going to be a lot of fun um, uh, doing that, and then we'll ha- we will have mediums rare again, where we'll have four mediums uh, providing uh, a platform demonstration with um, with lots of readings th- through the audience. We'll have six mediums, uh, six world renowned mediums that were carefully selected to provide private readings if you'd like to schedule one that's for attendees only so you can schedule an hour-long reading while you're while you're here in Scottsdale and you can um, uh, dive deeper into whatever it is that you want to want to find out from these mediums and uh, we've got Mark Anthony back again the psychic lawyer we've got George Nury back and we have a special special production happening on Saturday night that I can't talk about. So people will be thrilled to hear about that or to attend that. And right now our early bird pricing is one ninety five for the for the three and a half days. And on the thirty first it will increase by one hundred dollars. So that's our super early bird pricing right now. And then on the thirty first it'll go up a hundred dollars. It'll go up again in July and then the door price will be um will be a little bit higher. And we have negotiated room rates at this resort that I have that I never thought we would get this kind of pricing it's absolutely a magnificent resort and uh, we got super pricing 129 a night so um, I, I urge people to take advantage of that last year we we're at a smaller venue we sold out of rooms so we had to put people around the venue and because um, unfortunately, some people waited to make their reservations, and one woman wound up 30 miles away. So we don't want that to happen this time. We want to all be in the same place, and uh, we're, we're within walking distance to restaurants, so it's it's really a beautiful location. And Doubletree is one where the breakfast, hot breakfast is included? Uh, no, not at this Doubletree. Oh, okay. this, is, this is the resort, so unfortunately, no, that's that's not the case this year. But they have a restaurant. Oh yes, they okay. do, and they have a, they have a uh, coffee place. They have you know several several different tiers of restaurants in there. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I'm excited. I'm excited to see something new. And last year it was frustrating for some because it sold out, and this is now a bigger venue. And if even if he has about some words of wisdom for someone who really wants to go, but they'd have to travel alone. Yeah, well, you know, we do have we do have people coming in alone from Sweden and from Australia and from Germany. And so right now we have three women coming alone and they have kind of hooked up so that they can um, connect for for rooms and all of that. We do have a, a, a fan page or a Facebook page event page on on Facebook where we're connecting people so that they can if they want need a roommate they can get they can find one there um, I recommend coming in Thursday morning or Wednesday night and not departing until Monday morning if possible or at least Sunday night so that that gives you plenty of time to enjoy everything and uh, not not miss anything and gives you an opportunity to do a couple of those bucket list items um, that that uh, are here in Arizona for people. Mm, what's the Facebook group? Uh, the Facebook group, uh, the event page, page is, yeah, 2018 Afterlife Institute Symposium. Writing that down. Institute. Yeah, that's our, that's our um, and then we do have a discussion group as well that Wendy and Victor Zamet are the um, moderators on it, and that's the Afterlife Research and Education Discussion Group. Okay. And they're very active on there. Yes. The other thing that I would highly recommend is is Victor and Wendy Zamet run 
uh, these online Zoom events, world gatherings on a weekly basis. So they're doing training. They're doing, uh, you know, we just started a, uh, a publishing, a book publishing group so that people know the ins and outs because we've had, we've had some just horrific stories about people being ripped off by publishers, yes. taking their money, not paying royalties, and uh, promising radio shows not coming through on the marketing and the media. So we're, we're providing a, a, street, a stream for that um, and people to talk about it at the symposium and online if you can't make the symposium so that you can get guidance and ask, and ask any question you like of these, of these folks. I think it's great. I know in my heart of hearts that the group, AREI, Afterlife Research and Education Institute, are the top people in the world, the movers and the shakers, with the most amount of integrity, their, the love in their heart. Um, it's a nonprofit organization. It's not about making money. It's about sharing the reality of the afterlife. And I feel so lucky, Kathleen, and privileged that I get to be a part of this because the tides are turning and it's going to be a flip from so many people are interested in studying the afterlife and finding out about it, but it's not like we all have friends and family we talk about this with. But I see the day that it's going to be so open and AREI and events like the symposium are going to be the thing that really open it up to people. Uh, you're spot on. And, and, you know, I've been working this event for three years now and uh, I will let you in on a secret. Okay. We've just started talking about 2019 today. Oh, great. That's, that's um. That, that's that was most exciting to me because um, you know the, the people on the board of directors who who founded this organization and who are working so hard behind the scenes without payment or without or without anything you know in return except to see people heal and have fun at these events. Um, they, their tagline is "We are witnessing the dawning of the day when afterlife communication will be commonplace," and that's the truth. That is the truth right now. And what Suzanne and Suzanne teach is we don't need a medium to connect to the other side. It's nice to have the affirmation from a medium, but we don't need that. And the bottom line with this organization, with their their integrity and their character and their desire to, to change the world, is that they write that humankind will live in peace, love, and harmony when afterlife communication is commonplace. However, progress in helping people learn how to communicate with loved ones in the afterlife is being inhibited by lack of funding for research, development, and education. So we are always looking for donations uh, for our group. And the, the other bottom line here is for humankind to live in peace, love, and joy, there must be a change in deep-seated values and motivations. People must become more aware, more loving, compassionate, and other centered, but changes in values and motivations among people and societies occur glacially slowly. We are focusing on making that a fast and rapid change by letting people know exactly what the dead want us to know about living and what that transformation is like and how to make that as peaceful and loving as possible. It is a lot of people don't want to hear about death and dying, but um, you know, the next person who escapes it, you know, they'll have to let us know how they did it because we have to talk about this. It's no longer taboo. I totally agree. And yes, there's grief when we lose a loved one. I'm a firm believer in the more we love, the more it hurts. But yeah. <laughs> that love sure feels good. And to know that your loved one's still around to get the tools to connect with them to, I say at these symposiums that you witness the miraculous, the reunions, the EVPs, the, the stories people have. I mean, and so yes, your body will still grieve because, you know, we, we lose somebody that we love physically. But yes. I know from listeners and from my own self to have that belief in the afterlife, it's a different grief journey. 
uh, and there's so much support, whereas without it, I think you can really go into a, a deep, dark place. It, it, that's true. And I think that what people can expect is if you are grieving and, um, you know, even the loss of a home, we, we can, we can, you will feel better for attending. Uh, we will do lots of long, online events through AREI, but this, this annual symposium is about, you know, being next to somebody that you can elbow and say, Hey, did you hear that? Mm-hmm. And, able to connect afterwards and um, one one of our attendees call it a giant love fest so that's exactly what it is there is you will find peace you will find laughter you will find tears you will find you know the, the gamut but you will leave feeling uh, like feeling like never before like like you can conquer anything so true. And so many people last year, I encur- I really encouraged people last year when I was promoting, even if you are traveling alone, come. I've done 99.9% of my investigation by myself. And there isn't a conference room that I've stepped in that I haven't had this fear, you know, will I meet anybody? Will it be okay? And, you know, you just sit next to somebody and it's as simple as saying, hi, my name's Sandra. Hi, my name's Kathleen. And you strike up a conversation. And the next thing you know, you have a buddy. And then by the end of it, you have a notebook filled with people's phone numbers, email address, their Facebook pages, and you you have friends for life. Well, it, yes, and if you, that's exactly right. And if you're the least bit interested in afterlife communication, death and dying, or you know, uh, uh, just any of the the research or or that goes along with this, this is your tribe. We are the only um, e- event or symposium or group of people doing this work right now on the planet. Mm-hmm. So. This, this is your tribe. This is where you want to be. This is where you will make lifelong friendships. Um, and, and online in the Zoom groups with, with, uh, Victor and Wendy. This is the, and, and Craig Hogan as well. This is, this is your place to be. This is the place to be. Um, yeah. I can promise that it will be, that it will be transformational. It will be worth, worth the miles of travel and you will not be alone. You are never alone. And it's fun, oh, man. There's some laughter. I want to give the listeners a few links because th- some of the things we mentioned in in the description of this episode. If you're listening on iTunes or YouTube, in the district description, I have clickable links so that you can go to. But you mentioned um, Victor Zamet and Wendy Zamet, the Zoom meetings. Uh, ha- some happen weekly, some ha- or every other week. Some happen monthly. But if you go to the we- website victorzamet.com forward slash zoom and whether or not you can attend the symposium it's definitely a great place to view past videos of these conversations and participate in some of these um global online meetings they're um free we we do request if if you're interested you join arei and actually be part of the afterlife institute it's only 25 us dollars a year it's not a lot um after and that's afterlifeinstitute.org nobody's going to force you to do that but uh you really get emails with all the latest information and things um but it's so fantastic to be able to be in the privacy of your own home, connect through Zoom. So, you know, with your computer or your cell phone or your iPad, these days you can do it. And you're meeting with people all over the world talking about uh, this subject. It's spectacular. Yes, yes. It's And they are doing just a marvelous job. And more people are coming on to facilitate Zoom groups as well. So if you feel as though you want to facilitate um, some of these groups, Wendy is is standing by and uh, happy to, to walk you through the process so that we can, we'll help you market it, we'll help you get uh, followers and listeners, and you can see everybody's faces um, if, if you choose to turn your camera on and it's, it's really a good way to connect, be affirmed, get your questions answered and to be a part of something really life changing and big. Yeah. Oh, it's in it fun and exciting. And you know, when we don't, be- let's see, when we don't have a fear of dying, we don't have to have a fear of living. It puts our life in this whole new perspective. And I personally like what I am passionate right now, the most about in my life is, you know, if we aren't, if we aren't dying, you know, I mean, we all physically die, but I do believe that we are souls having a human experience and how can we have more miracles in our life and how 
can we fulfill our dreams and all those things because we do have the soul power you know so that's like my focus of interest right now and and having us all live a good life kathleen before um i forget Mm -hmm. can we talk a little bit about uh sponsorship opportunities i know that there are people listening who have made donations to my show which i'm grateful for i keep this commercial free so that no interruptions. But I also think in this audience that's listening right now, there might be someone or several people that might want to get aboard as far as sponsorship. Is there a way they can find out about uh, being a sponsor and having their name in front of a, you know, 800 people at the upcoming yeah. symposium? Yep. We have, we have four levels of sponsorship and we have, um, we have gold, silver, bronze, and bronze, bronze one and bronze two. And so you can, for as little as a thousand dollars, sponsor the event and be seen. We also have a, we'll also have a full color, uh, program that you can purchase ads in or purchase a space to be seen. And we are, we also have vendor applications available for anyone who would like to vend at this, at this symposium. We have to do it by application because we're getting so many and we don't want any du- duplicates in businesses and, and all that. So we're trying to be, you know, very, very selective in that process. But um, the sponsorship opportunities are on the website, afterlifesymposium.org. You'll see the button for sponsorship. And there's a package there that tells you what the, what the um, different levels are, what you get for those different levels. There's also a program ad button so that you can place an ad in the program. You don't have to attend to do that. And, um, and then, of course, there's an, a vendor package as well should you choose to come and share your wares. Mm, that's great. I have um, listened to an audio book about Orville and Wilbur Wright, who invented the airplane. And if you've listened to the past few shows, you hear me talk about the Wright brothers a lot. You know, there are people that people didn't think, they thought they were lunatics and that yes. uh, there's no way there's going to be any air travel or airplanes and stuff. And like, look at the world now. But I remember hearing stories um and, you know, there were some old timers interviewed that actually saw those first flights and they were there at that time to see history in the making. And I know, and for you sitting at home or wherever you are listening to that show, whether you attend the symposium or not, uh, and I, we want you to, of course, you know, or join afterlifeinstitute.org, but to be part of something and that someday you'll be looking back, whether it's while you're still on the planet or you're, you know, a being of service on the other side, you know, that you were part of it. You made it happen. And we never know who's sitting next to us uh on an airplane or we don't know who's right in front of us at the grocery store or you know there there's so many opportunities that we have to lend a smile uh give a compliment op- you know change people's days by little things you know not saying you have to push the afterlife on them but be a friend uh make a difference and it'll come back to you so oh, that's so spot, so spot on. And this is a good time too for to, you know, some people have have learned to make their plans for when they transition on on how they will connect and who they'll connect to and and all of that and learning you know learning how to do that and learning you know what you're going to do and it kind of I'm sorry to say but it makes it kind of exciting um, <laughs> for that for that you know when when that transition does does occur you know what you'll do and how you'll do it and and. Uh, knowing knowing what works and <laughs> it's um having people on the lookout it's it, it's all very interesting and and we we are be- all becoming lifelong friends so it's um something that i just feel so strongly about and um again to finish up on the sponsorship thing you can be a gold sponsor for as little as four thousand dollars and you'll get tickets to the symposium you'll get you'll get um ads you'll get um marketing you'll you'll be seen big time and you can sponsor for as low for as little as a thousand dollars so um we we really look forward to anyone who'd like to participate and be seen to please contact me yeah thank you for that and being of service there's some that are being of service by volunteering. Some have the financial capabilities to do that. And if this is something that sounds good to you, afterlifesymposium.org, and you can click on sponsorship. 
or register. <laughs> Come to the banquets. In fact, the last show we just had was with um, the ladies that are doing the Friday night banquet. Oh. So we had Debbie Johnstone, who's an animal communicator, and Ann Albers, who's just a phenomenal mystic medium angel communicator. And they're going to be talking about touched by an angel. And so it'll be an experience for everybody to learn about angel communication, feel the touch of an angel. And you may even have been touched by an angel, but they're so funny and (laughs) so great. And if we've come all this way, you might as well power pack your adventure and do something fun in the evening. So the um, banquets are great. They're they're always fun. And then, oh, um, I'm a big fan of mediums myself. How do people find out about uh, getting a medium reading? Well, we just placed it on the website, afterlifesymposium.org. Okay. Scroll all the way down to the to the bottom of the page. You'll see the six mediums there. And then you click on the button, book a reading, and uh, you'll be taken to a page where they have their headshots, their bios, what they're best at, and, and their contact information. You contact them directly, pay them directly. And, um, you know, you, you brought up a good point. AREI is not in this to make money. We, we aren't up, you know, we aren't upselling anything. We aren't, we aren't, um, charging more so that we can make, make money off the banquets. We're charging what we're paying. And so, um, you know, anything that you can do to, to help us out would be great. But anyway, that, that's where the mediums are, every detail about them. And, um, so you can make a selection. They will sell out. And this is, uh, you know, it's just a, a, a fact that, that we sold out of the, the entire symposium last year, a month in advance. So, you know, just be aware of that if, if you're trying to make up your mind on, on whether you, you want to attend or not. Yeah, that's just crazy, crazy good. And yeah. I've been to conferences that were many thousands of dollars for three days and a hundred and ninety five or two ninety five if you get the early bird as opposed to the super early bird. It's not bad at all. I mean, it really is this going to be something that um, is going to change your life? Yes. Um, you know, we all have, you know, you, either you know you can attend or you can't, or maybe it'll be 2019, but a sincere invite to everyone. So Kathleen, as our minutes are drawing to a close, could you look in your heart from all that you've seen and done and just maybe quiet your mind for a moment and just, if you were to give some advice, whether people attend the symposium or not, but just maybe something for us to live the rest of our day or um, just some closing words that are of inspiration. What I'm what I'm focused on today is I, I, I have a tendency to to drive pretty hard. I I, I work hard and um, look up is is one of the things that I'm going to recommend is look up, look at the sky, look around. If you feel like you have like you're a little myopic on what you're trying to do or achieve, open up your your blinders a little bit and you know turn in a circle, look all the way around. And um, and be love. I, I'm I'm constantly checking in with with what if I say or do this, how will it affect me um, in the future? And and what do, what does this really mean? What is my intent in in this? And if it's not loving, you know, uh, step back and and figure out what 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 kind of a wound you're carrying that would would cause you to to be or do something other than than kind and loving. And that's my thing. I mean, I'm not accusing anyone of having wounds or, or doing unkind things, but uh, we are human beings on this planet. This is school for us. This is where we're learning. And so that's my thing for today. Look up, be love, and uh, function with intent. I oh, love it. And there's something I totally forgot to ask you. i wanted i had not been on your website sundance on success.com before Mm -hmm. i had no idea that you get under so many or work with so many people to help them get their their words and their dreams and their products and services and stuff out there could you just talk a, a minute or two about your business because i 
know a lot of entrepreneurial friends who have no idea, even including myself, big dreams, to get from point A to point B. We've got these dreams, and I'm seeing you as somebody who helps publicize them and get them out there. Well, yes. And my business originally started out where I was started to help people build their business foundations. If they were straddling the corporate world and they really wanted to focus on their book and their, and their speaking or getting, you know, television and radio, I focused on building their websites and the, and the foundation of their business because I'm very process lean thinking oriented. So I, I, I can do those things very easily. My business has evolved into representing and working with people who have, who are more established and have their websites and have their products or are developing their products, maybe have their book on press or going to press and they're, and they're ready to, um, to, un, to unveil uh, a, a workshop or create a workshop. Those are the kind of kind of people that I like to work with because I, I feel like there's so many people out there with some really great stuff to share. And so I think that we have our our people like Marianne Williamson, Wayne Dyer, and all of those people who have really paved the way for this work. And now it's time for some for some new voices that enhance the discussion and that um, and that make it bigger and broader. So I'm I'm open to working with people who are who are ready to share that who are who are ready to step up and out and my you know what I like to tell them is you can do this work anyone can do what I do but I'd rather you focus on your gifts because this can this can for for creatives and for people who are really productive and and churning out the work and the and the books and the quotes and all of those kinds of things do what you do best. This this can kind of suck the life out of you for people who 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 are more creative in in another aspect of their lives. So that's those are the people that I'm looking for that are open to um, a co-creative working relationship and um, an expansion into you know media, uh, conferences, events, and and those types of things. Oh, I love it. You might have a new client right here on the call with you. <laughs> well, I have dreams about having a We Don't Die cruise. I've got dreams about We Don't Die seminar. Anyways, that's oh. for another conversation. But thank you from the bottom of my heart um, for being our guest today. Bless you, Sandra. I'm so happy to be connected with you. And uh, we'll be doing some great things together. Thank you for all you do for us. Thank you so much. It is my pleasure because us includes me and yeah. without a REI and having things to look forward to um, I'd be nobody and uh, I love everything I'm doing is out of love you know because I'm a human being with my own struggles I don't have it all handled but every show that I get to do and every guest I talk to I get jazzed up about my life I get some new things and I get excited so a minute, just as much as everybody. So for our listener, I want to thank you for listening. A reminder, Kathleen Malone's website is Sundance on Success. And our Afterlife Symposium is afterlifesymposium.org. If you can't attend, we invite you, go to afterlifeinstitute.org, become a member of AREI. If you want to join on our online Zoom meetings, you can go to victorzamet.com forward slash Zoom. Can't say enough good things about Victor and Wendy Zamet. They publish a Friday Afterlife report for free. That's something you can also get on victorzamet.com. A couple of Facebook groups, um, the 2018 Afterlife Institute Symposium and the Afterlife Research and Education Discussion Group. And again, this is all going to be down in the um, description of this episode. So you can just click on those links. If you can make a move, go to the website, uh, come visit us in September, the early super early bird uh, fee of 195 just goes till May 31st. But you might be tuning into this after that fact, and it'll go up to one two ninety five, and then it'll go up again. Um, so just come in whenever you can, but as sooner the better. So uh, guarantees you the space. Our home base for this website is we don't die radio.com. And we have now 258 episodes of really great life changing conversations all over the map. So many different things about the afterlife, help through grief and how to have a good life. Um, 
So in closing, I am Sandra Champlain. And once again, I am delighted I get to be your host on We Don't Die Radio. I do believe that life is an education for the soul and that your life here on earth is important. I love Kathleen's advice of looking up and twirling around and being love. And if something you're doing isn't quite fitting into love, um, maybe you shouldn't be doing it or maybe there you can put love into it. So I really want to thank you for listening and we'll see you soon.